All right, people, it's language arts time. And you can yell at me or you can just go with it. I decided to keep you hanging a little bit, a little bit of a mystery. Who was it that Luke Hadley saw going to that saloon in the town of Crossroads? After talking to the marshal, who is it he saw going by him? Well, guess what? Here it goes. We're on page 61 of the book 10 star. And we're in the middle of the page. Um, he whirled around. His heart almost stopped when he saw crazy Walter Benedict at the rear of the bar, talking with two others. In spite of studying the wanted posters and etching likeness of the gang into his head, Luke didn't recognize either of the men crazy Walter harangued. He threw caution to the winds and jumped from the pharaoh table to the top of the Brunswick bar. Men along the entire length grabbed their drinks to keep him from kicking them over. Luke had made it halfway to Benedict when the bartender wrapped his strong arms around his legs and tackled him. Crashing forward into the bar, knocked the wind from his lungs, gasping for air, prevented him from effectively fighting. The barkeep grabbed him by. We're turning the page here. Grabbed him by the coat collar and heaved him out into the sawdusted floor. Luke overturned a cuspidor when he hit hard. He recalled from the sticky, brown, smelly gunk and clambered to his knees. The men at the bar crowded him and made no help to help, no effort to help him stand. You loco drunk, the barkeep raged at him, shaking a fist. You don't walk in my bar. I paid good money for it to be sent all the way from Philadelphia. Luke clawed his way to his feet. His gun was sticky with sludge from the cuspidor. He wiped his hand on his pant leg, then he pulled his six gun. This got everyone's attention. The barkeep yelled for his uh, bouncers, and a fist fight broke out between two neighbor, ne nearby patrons as he made his way toward the back of the gin mill. The bouncers ignored him in favor of breaking up the fight. This created even more chaos, like dominoes falling over. Luke twisted and turned and kicked his way free into an oasis of calm not ten feet from Benedict. Their eyes met. For a moment, Benedict looked puzzled. Then he let out a yelp of pure anger and went for his six-shooter. Luke had his out already and fired. Just as he squeezed the trigger, a drunk crashed into him. The shot went high and shattered the huge mirror behind the bar. Luke cursed his bad luck, but it also saved him. Benedict opened fire, spraying lead everywhere. If Luke had been remained where he was, he would have been a dead duck. One bullet cut through the brim of his hat and another creased his cheek. He regained his balance. The world seemed to have been dipped in molasses. Everything moved slowly, deliberately, with every detail sharp-edged and vivid. Luke raised his six-gun as if fighting against heavy weights on his arm. His thumb drew back the hammer. Hair by hair, his trigger finger tightened. Fear blossomed in crazy wind and water Benedict's face. That was almost as good as killing a man. Almost. The trigger finally came back all the way. The hammer fell with a dull click on a dud round. Two bouncers grabbed Luke and lifted his, him high. He twisted around to see Benedict's kick. Benedict kick open a door at the end of the bar and vanished through it. Then he was fighting both men, intent on wailing the tar out of him. Oh, boy. He sees Benedict. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a little too much drama for me, but... He's right there. He's got this guy, the guy who actually took his wife. He's got him right there. You'd think he would think a little bit, but he's not thinking, is he? Ah, oh, it irritates me. That's the end of chapter five. Let me see what chapter six has to offer. I guess that's why they write these stories. They want you to keep on reading, right? Okay. Solid. This is chapter six. We're in chapter six now. 
A solid punch to the breakfast bread basket drove Luke Hadley to his knees. He gasped for air and tried not to bend forward too far because he knew that what was coming next. A raised rising knee barely missed his chin. It, if it had connected, he would have been out like a light. With a twist that took him away from the bouncer, so intent on turning him into a buttered side, side of beef, he staggered into a trio of men fighting one another. Luke was too confused to figure out how that fight went. He threw his arms around the closest cowboy and bulldogged him to the floor. A tiny tornado of sawdust kicked up, giving him a chance to roll until a fetched up arm against the wall. Hard, fetched up until he fetched up hard against the back wall. Fighting to get his breath back, he watched the ebb and flow of the dining book in a way it mesmerized him. He had always enjoyed watching waves go down the Mississippi. They'd rise up and move swiftly out of sight. But another always followed, and another, and another, marching off with precise spacing like soldiers on parade. Washing against a shore caused them to break apart. The bar fight was like that. As the tide came back, men broke up in pairs and the fight worse, pardon me, and the fight went out of them. A few righted tables and gathered scattered cards from poker games interrupted by the fight. The pharaoh dealer was no novice. She had scooped up all the bets on her table and clutched them to her ample bosom until the fight ended and the gambling started back up. As the senses returned, he realized this was his fight. Luke had started it by running along the bar. He had a chance to stop Benedict and failed. Lifting up his six shoulder, he broke it open, knocked the brass out, and reloaded all the cartridges to be sure to get rid of the dud round. The outlaw had hightailed it out the back door. He couldn't have gone far. Standing on wobbly legs, Luke realized he had let his anger get the better of him. If he had killed Mal Benedict, he'd never find where Audrey had been taken. He thrust the six shorter back into his holster and edged along the wall, avoiding the increasingly sporadic fighting the best he could. When he got into the back door, a heavy hand landed on his shoulder and whirled him around. He thought a bouncer had caught him, but it was one of the men Benedict had been arguing with. You're staying put, the man said. He lisped a little bit because of hair lip. Crazy water, He'll he told me to give him a big head start. Luke fainted with his left and landed a right on the man's cheek. His head snapped back and he stumbled. Man, this is getting crazy, isn't it? Okay. Before Luke could get out the door, the man pulled himself upright using the bar and went for his gun. The discharge filled the room with gun smoke and an echo that sent some of the men diving for cover. The more determined kept fighting. The slug intended for Luke's head took another chunk out of his hat brim. It is start, if it started raining, that hat would be like a rain gutter funneling water onto his face. A quick twitch brought his Model 3 into his fist. He fanned off two fast rounds, both missed. One tore splinters from the bar, and another broke a beer mug. Benedict's partner got off another round, but he wasn't aiming. The bullet went wild and brought down Planter from the ceiling. Luke knew this gunfight had to end fast or some bystander would get ventilated. He took more time aiming and squeezed off a third round. Again, he missed. Going back to his original tactic, he fanned the remaining three rounds in the outlaw's direction. By now, the man had rolled back, uh, rolled a table around, and crouched behind it. He peered out and took a couple shots at Luke. I don't want you, Luke shot. I want Benedict. He'd skin me alive if I let you after him. Knowing crazy water, that might be the kindest thing he'd do. That's what he said. Um... The woman he kidnapped, kidnapped. She's what I, the woman he kidnapped. She's what I want. I'll get let Benedict go if I get my wife unharmed. She's Benedict's now. 
And I know you who you must be. In spite of him filling you full of lead back then, he told me all about how he took her from your wedding. Luke saw red. The man's taunts ripped away and he remaining good sense he had. He rushed forward and smashed into the table. He turned it over and pinned the man under it. One hand holding a six, uh, a six gun flopped around. The man's finger tightened and a round went sailing off to hit a gambler who had refused to leave his table. The gambler screeched like a banshee and produced a derringer from some lever and rod attachment fastened to the left forearm. He fired and he didn't care if he hit Luke or the outlaw under the table. A splinter from the derringer round kicked up into Luke's face. He winced, giving the outlaw a chance to leave out from under the table. The entire saloon was in pandemonium. Men still fought, not caring what they punched, who they punched, but the real danger came from the few who added their six shooters to the fray. I led flew everywhere. Luke plucked at the splinter in his cheek. His fingers came away red with his own blood. Not only had a sliver of wood embedded himself into his face, but at least two rounds had ceased him, decreased him. The blood oozed from the shallow rounds. When he saw it, his fury rose to Olympian heights. He roared and dived for the retreating outlaw. His arms circled the man's waist and pulled him down. He was rewarded with a kick to the groin. For a split second, he loosened his hold. The outlaw kicked again. A new bloody grove appeared on Luke's face as a spur raked his cheek. Boy, they're really getting into it, aren't they? Arms went windmilling. He went through punches at anything that moved. Some of the blows landed where they did not did the most good. One hit the barkeep as he came around to break up the fight. Quit it, you two. I'm throwing you out. Where are your bouncers? Where are the bouncers? Get out over here and help me. Luke tried to use a six gun again, but some fingers, strong fingers closed around the wrist and forced him to aim at the ceiling. One round fire with a heave. Luke got on the barkeep off. Pardon me. Luke got the barkeep off him and leveled his six gun at the outlaw. His finger came back on the trigger. Then his arms were pinned on the sides. A lariat lightened, tightened. A second rope caught his foot with a jerk on the ropes. He was crashed to the ground. He had been calves. He had seen calves hogtied for branding. Whoever used the ropes duplicated the technique way too well. Quit struggling. Don't make me drop a noose around your neck. A circle of rope around his upper arms tightened. He tried to kick free of the loop about his foot and only fell heavily. Panting harshly, he looked up and saw the marshal holding the lariat, pinning his arms down. A deputy tugged on the other rope to keep him stretched and helplessly. Arrest that one, Marshal Wilkes. He's one of the Rhodes gang. Luke saw how little effect his demand had on the lawman or his deputy. He watched in fury as he lost his chance to catch Rhodes' headsman. The Owl Hoop Benedict had been speaking to or to blasted free, uh, pardon me, the outlaw Owl Hoot Benedict had been speaking to blasted free of the saloon and into the night. Oh, pardon me. The Owl Hoop Benedict had been speaking to blasted free of the saloon and into the night. Luke raged. He tried to slip free of the ropes only to find a tight no matter how he moved. If the marshal came up with a branding iron, the scene from a roundup would be complete. He won't go far, Marshal Wilkes yanked on the rope and brought Luke to sitting position. The deputy released the rope around his foot, so Luke lurched to his feet. You calm enough? The lawman yanked on the rope and pulled it to the tight, so tight it cut off Luke's air. The lasso had another purpose. Circulation to his arms was cut off, forcing him to drop his six gun. The marshal picked up the pistol and tucked it into his belt. He yanked hard and sent Luke staggering. Let's go. Your barroom blowing is over for the night. It's all over. It's over for all time. The barkeep yelled and waved his fist in the air. He's banned for life. If he sticks his nose in here again, I'll shoot, out, shoot it off. I'll have the bouncers cut it off and feed it to him. 
Cool down a mite, the marshal said. Tally up a, a bill for the damage. I'll see that he gets paid. This mollified the bartender a little. He went to the back of the bar and picked up a rag to begin the cleanup. The last thing Lou occurred as he was dragged outside was a customer saying in the barkeep, stand us all to a drink stand us all to a drink and put it on your repair list. You owe us. The response because this response because too muffled became too muffled to understand. But the real drama unfolded in the street. The outlaw had been roped by three deputies and they held him spread eagled in the dirt. Only one arm thrashed about. The other was pinned to his side, and each of the remaining deputies had last to the leg. He's one of the Rhodes gang. He was getting orders from Crazy Water Benedict. I told you to quiet down, the master said. Ask anyone in the town about me, Benson Wilkes, and they'll tell you I'm not prone to get upset. That said, my patience is at the end of its rope. If you push me, I'll see that you're at the end of your rope, only it'll be a noose around your filthy neck. As if Luke were nothing more than a dog on a leash, the marshal pulled him along. As they passed the outlaw flopping around the street, in the street, Luke tried to pick, kick him up, kick him. This got him an especially hard tug on his rope. I got, to, you, I got you for disturbing the peace, shooting up the saloon in town, and that's saying something special since Crossroads has a dozen. And now I got you for assault and battery on a helpless man. He's an outlaw, so you say. I don't remember seeing his aspect on any water poster, and I keep a close lookout. But Benedict, he, inside now, the marshal released the rope with a, pardon me, with a deft flip. He added a boot to the rear to get Luke moving in the right direction. Luke fumbled in the coat pocket and pulled out the star. Look, Marshal, I'm sorry this happened, but I, I don't give two boots and a holler if you're Alan picking in the cell. In there, second cell. But Benson Wilkes held up a cautioning finger. There wasn't anything that would change his mind. Luke put the badge away. It wasn't going to keep him from being jailed. The best he could hope for was being run out of crossroads as he had been from Preston. That wasn't going to make finding the gang any easier. I could go on, but as you can see, wow, that's quite a bit of reading there. He has a situation where he sees the guy, crazy water bandit. He wants his wife back. And he's in the bar. And, you know, thinking normally, you'd say, go talk to the guy, have a conversation. Well, the guy is an outlaw, so he's not going to have a conversation with him. But he could have been a little more mellow about it, but he was He lost it because he's so caught up in having his wife back, which makes sense. And, of course, man, talk about the barroom bro. I mean, it makes the movies look mild. But Sheriff obviously didn't, real, didn't want to see this happen. So... It's interesting that the, 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 the outlaw gets caught, and we'll see what happens next because this is quite a story of this Pinkerton man trying to catch this um, outlaw. And, folks, as you can see, there's more to the story, and we'll have to see what happens next. Next time. Thanks for watching.